What's up guys, this is Tommy from Camelot and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. Hello and welcome to another interview with Sonic Perspectives. I'm Samantha Buckman and today I am joined by the charismatic frontman of Camelot. Um, I am so excited to talk to you today. Um, we have a lot of questions and a lot of them are going to be about your upcoming album, which is The Awakening out on the 17th. So what can you tell me about the new album? How long has this been in the work? Uh, hey guys, yeah. So um, it's been, I mean, we came out of an extensive uh, touring cycle uh, right before COVID hit. So we were just gonna, you know, put the pen to the paper and, and started writing. And that's what we did. And uh, I mean, it took yeah the whole the whole duration of COVID basically to to write the album and to get it out. So I think we spent, you know, the lion's share of the time working on the album and, uh, uh, you know, it, a bit different to to what it usually has been. You know, it, usually we come out of a touring cycle. We don't have that much time to work on an album, but uh, I mean, with deadlines being pushed all all um, during COVID, you know, we had a deadline, then the next deadline came, the next deadline came, and so we had more time this time. And uh, I think it, uh, you know, um, it gave us the opportunity to to revisit and um, and uh, really make sure that every, you know, we, we usually do that too, but we had some more time this time uh, to really make sure that everything is to our liking. And, and uh, yeah, that, that feels really, really good. Well, since it's been in the works for so long, in those early days when, you know, everyone was still stuck inside and locked apart, were you still able to get together for songwriting or did you do that virtually? You know what, we, we um, yeah, usually we have been, um, you know, in the past, we, we meet, meet up in different constellations. Um, like Thomas would go to Oliver for a little bit. I would go to Oliver and then I would go to Sasha for a month or two. And that's kind of where everything comes together. But uh at this time we couldn't do that uh, obviously uh, the world was in a lockdown and so we just we we just uh, plugged away working on our own stuff in our own uh, little studios and uh, that's how the whole album you know came together which is pretty pretty cool i mean that's not too far off uh, what it usually is but uh, this time we don't we had no chance to see each other which was kind of an interesting <laughs> thing to do things and at the same time, you were putting together an album for Seventh Wonder, um, and that just came out last year, about a year ago. So how did you balance those two things? Well, when it comes to me, it, there's never balancing. There's no balance. Uh, I just, uh, it, it always happens, you know, for me in the past too. Like I, I remember being, um, recording the Shadow Theory, Tiara, and, the Arion album, uh, the source at the same time. And I was like, like a mad scientist. And I think a little bit like that, uh, this time around too. But, um, uh, the thing, the thing is that, uh, the seventh out, the seventh wonder album came together really quick in a sense for us. It usually takes us a couple of years to make an album. It took us less than a year to make this album. And, uh, uh instead Camelot took longer so it's just reversed and uh but usually that's that's what it is As things just happen to line up at the same time i mean it's pretty awesome to have these two albums coming back to back so when it comes to touring in the future what are you looking at in the balance between um these two projects well we don't have anything planned for seventh wonder more than what we already did on on uh, the new album so um, it's going to be all focused on the Camelot touring cycle, getting the album out there finally, you know, be able to tour again. And and uh, yeah, we have a new tour coming up in less than two weeks now, starting in Europe. And uh, we just came off a little little uh, mini tour in uh, South America, which, you know, we couldn't play too many new songs. We played the one song that was out, the, the one we're flagging the ground. and. Uh, but excited to play some more songs of, of the album and just meet people again. You know? Yeah. And so one more flag in the ground, the lead single from the album. 
the music video for that is fantastic. Um, and in a comment below the music video um, from the band, it said that this song is about fighting illnesses, both mental and physical. So what really inspired you to write this particular song? Oh, well, I think it also came together, you know, like I think most people have had, have or have had people in their close vicinity f fighting something. And it, um, it definitely, uh, you know, resonates with me seeing, you know, an unprecedented amount of people suffering from different things. And, and um, it, it's never been more people in the world right now than right now suffering from, like you said, both mental and, and physical. And in a mental, mental illness becomes physical too. Uh, that's how it manifests. And uh, so it's like, um, yeah, it's just seeing, you know, looking around and seeing what actually happens and it's happening in the world. And then just, you know, COVID in, in general, I think for, for many people was an introspective time. I think you had, you know, you got the opportunity to stop and stop in your tracks and take a breath and uh, kind of reevaluate yourself and and uh, see what you wanted to be, be, you know, entering the new world, which is also why the album is called The Awakening. It's kind of like, you know, the the world awakens after after this whole debacle. So. So what are some of the other themes that the album takes on? Well, it's it's mostly I mean, it's not a, uh, you know, it's not based on any storyline or anything like that, like Silvertorn, for example, or the Black Halo. It's it's more thematically connected to what I just said, being being introspective, you know, being having the time to think and <clears throat> you know, wanting to be inspiring to people and wanting to, you know, people to push through their fears and push through their um uh, pain to get to the other side, which is reward. Otherwise, you know, there's no one said it was going to be easy to live. Uh, so it's going to come with some kind of sacrifice, some kind of work. Uh, but if you're willing to do that and dig deep, I think, you know, the reward on the other side is is um, worth it. Have you faced anything like that in your own life, fears that you've had to overcome? Many. I have to overcome my fears any, every time I go on a stage. And I, I keep doing that, revisiting that fear every time. <laughs> every um every show every every time i have to do something with music i even writing i i i, I think i'm not good enough i think i'm i'm uh, i'm not going to succeed this time i'm um if, you know maybe i forgot how to write maybe i was just lucky uh, people are going to see that i'm not a good singer like it's so many so many fears um that that i think is very common you know but it's about facing those and, and overcoming those. And I think that's how you grow as a person. Personal growth is something that seems very central to Camelot's story, um, especially, you know, beginning with Silverthorn was 10 years, more than 10 years ago now, which feels incredible. And since then, every subsequent album has climbed higher and higher and higher on the charts. So what do you want to see with Awaken, um, with The Awakening? You know, I think very little about the charts and I, and uh, what is, you know, considered success hourly. Uh, for me, success is just being, being able to tell the stories once again that people will uh, resonate with. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing if it makes, if it makes it on the, onto the charts and, you know, it does well out in the world, of course, but that's not the main objective. The main objective is just to stay true to what our hearts and the way we write music and hopefully that's going to resonate with people it it does seem to very very strongly um and but when it does come to staying true to yourselves how do you feel that camelot sound has evolved over time especially um since you've joined oh yeah i mean in the beginning it was it was a lot for me you know, I had to digest what is camel music, what is to be able to contri uh, contribute, uh, contribute, contribute um, to, you know, the, the, the future of Camelot. So I had to, you know, kind of, I wanted to honor what was there and, uh, and kind of bring the best out of that somehow and, but still make it my own and, and, and pave the way for a new Camelot too. So it was, it was, it was a, 
a, a mouthful in the beginning. Um, just, but then just trying to stay true to what what I think is good music too, or what we think is good music. You know, you can't try to do a formulated thing and and expect it to resonate with people. You got to do something that feels like you. Otherwise, it's gonna shine through. So I think uh, you know, looking in the mirror, I think. You know, of course, there was an adjustment period in the beginning, but I was thrown in there right away, writing lyrics, writing the melodies, and um, like from from day one. So I just had to make you know do my homework and and see <laughs> what Camilla was about and what was musically the theme and the mood and all that stuff. But then, you know, with every album, it becomes more and more you. And I think we're at the point right now where I feel very comfortable. Yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. And there are so many words that people use to describe just what Camelot's music sounds like. But one that really interested me was in a press release that I read, where it described this new album as ultra modern gothic, which I thought was very interesting. So how would you describe the sound of the new album? Do you even feel that that's a good label for it? Oh, yeah, I think I think it is a good label. And I think um um kind of what we wanted what we aimed for with this album was to bring back some of the themes from the past like the more hymn uh style uh beautiful melodies uh uh keep that you know bring more of that in because we all really love it and uh but then mix it like dress it up in a, in a 2023 kind of suit in a way with the, with the new like fresh sound with a little bit more upfront guitars and um but you know all in all it's just about the, the you know the the story has to have an evolution to it or the the flow of the album it's always important to us it has to feel like you can listen to it from front to back that's how we want people to listen if they want to be listening like that um but then also the, you know have the song stand alone uh, and be strong enough. So, and I think also something that we consciously did was to take the, you know, our experience in a live setting and uh, and apply it to the songs and say what works live, what do we like performing live, what translates in the, you know, emotionally with people live, and then make the songs accordingly. And I think that's something we've never done before. And I think this, you know, that's why I think at some point we should be able to even play the whole album front to back. Do you have a particularly um, particular favorite song that you are looking forward to playing live? Ah, oh, man. I mean, just playing One More Flag in the Ground was really cool because it's, uh, it's I think it's, it's a powerful song. Play, played live, it's a very powerful song, very encouraging, very, you know, them, you know anthem, like, and the, that was really cool. I'm, I'm excited to play that in Europe and, and in the States when we get there because, um, you know, it will have had time to just to, to simmer a little bit, you know, but other than that, I, I always I'm a sucker for ballads and, and I think Midsummer Eve is going to be beautiful if we play that live. Yeah. Oh, I love that song so much. It just sounds tremendous. So I'm I would look forward to seeing that live for sure. Um, and when it comes to um, the songs on this album, are there any that you feel really challenge um, challenge you and the band musically, like technically? One song that comes to mind that is a little bit more progressive is this, is the cl uh, closing song, My Pantheon, which is, is kind of kind of a trip on its own, and it's it's like a lot of highs and lows, like the dynamics, very heavy parts, uh, very beautiful parts, and an epic chorus. I think that that one's probably the my pick for the most challenging one. Yeah. And if we're talking about favorites and challenges, what is your favorite song from the old, like the very old Camelot catalog to perform? I don't know if we're doing a very old song um, in the repertoire, but I mean, I've always like one of the first songs that I learned was uh, Center of the Universe. And uh, for the tour, when I was doing backup vocals behind uh, Fabio, and uh, I, I, I got to come out and do one or two songs a night, and that was one of them. So I, I like that song. It really, 
it's a really epic song i think um though has that kind of old camelot vibe you know that we now wanted to bring back but dress it up in a little nicer um uh, more modern suits it is a really fun song so i can totally see why you'd enjoy that um now I want to come back to sort of the imagery that's on the awakening like the music video for one more flag in the ground is so visually stunning and the album art is just so full of color and symbolism so can you talk a little bit a little bit more about the imagery associated with the album yeah i mean um the imagery has always been a thomas youngblood thing i mean it's it's what he does and and he works closely with the artist and to create the, you know, the mood and the imagery that, you know, has always been the a Camelot trademark, right? Uh, for this album, the, you know, like you see a lot of details. I'm not going to reveal all of them, but you see them in, in the cover art. Um, you see them inside the booklet. You know, it's a lot about, uh, for example, we have a song called Blood Moon, you know, Blood Moon. Uh, symbolizes you know the end of something but the 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 rebirth if you will of something and uh kind of that pagan symbol she has on her forehead and the um you know that uh lady on the front is kind of like you know you can kind of see it like a crescent moon almost and uh like the end the end of something and the beginning of something is really close together uh and uh, it's kind of it's just you no know, stuff like that that he tries to you know, take from the lyrics and, and and make into you know incorporate into the artwork which is always a really cool part of Camelot too so you, what you're saying is that this to get the whole story you're going to want to buy the physical booklet so you can actually see everything that's a good takeaway yeah yeah Beautiful. and when it does come to the music video I just have to ask, you looked like a movie, like a movie star, like an action hero in that. I mean, everyone did. Was it fun to film? Yeah, it's always fun. It's always super fun, especially when you get to act a little bit, right? Like when you get to actually not only sing and, and act the lyrics, but also act. Um, it's, it's a little intimidating because, you know, there's a green screen and you don't really know what it's going to look like. So you just have to look like an idiot for a little bit and then yeah, uh, but it usually looks cool at the end, you know, and and uh, uh, yeah, I think this album, this this uh, video turned out really cool with, you know, that kind of deserty dune feel. I thought it was really fun. And when it comes to the second single you've put out, um, you do have a couple of guest musicians on this album. So mm -hmm. can you talk about um, who you chose and why? Yeah, I mean Tina has always his. She's been on the radar for a long time. I think for Thomas to he's again Thomas is the one, kind of keeping people, um, you know, yeah, staying up to date with the scene. And when it comes to me, I have no idea. Uh, I'm I'm very not up to date. But um, you know he he does that and does that very well and and you know, keeps keeps people in mind. Of course, if I if I hear a song, I, I'll think about it. As, you know, a person or something like that. If I, if I write something and I feel like this could suit this person, but um, mostly it's Thomas that has someone in mind already. That, you know, we can write for. Um, but to, Tina is on this album. She's on that song, Opus of the Nights, and she's on Midsummer's Eve. Um, and that she's just you know that those are those are two worlds perfectly intertwined. I think. Um, you know, she's very theatrical and uh, in her way of expressing herself and uh, she plays kind of the same style, if you will. And, uh, you know, that's this, this, this really cool. I'm really, really stoked about her, you know, the album. And uh, she does, she, for the people that doesn't know who Tina is, uh, she plays uh, cello for Hans Zimmer, um, you know, a lot of movie scores you played on the dune movie score recently and yeah it's really cool then we have melissa bonnie who's um, um uh, just a phenomenal uh, person and singer too and and uh up and coming on, in the metal scene and um yeah i remember seeing her at a couple of camera shows in the past and and um it's cool that she finally you know 
you know, got to the point where she is actually on stage with, uh, with, with us. I just that is really cool. Uh, and she's very professional, very, very, very competent and sweet person. So she's awesome to tour with too. So, so you know, just good things to say about both the both of them. So I know you said that you're not quite up to date on the scene, but if you could do a collaboration or bring in anyone from music in general to work with, who would it be? It would be impossible because Michael Jackson is no longer around. <laughs> but that would be cool. I mean, he had some grit back in the day. He had some grit. Let's look at the Thriller, um, you know, the song Thriller and, and that video, for example, like he's in, or Smooth Criminal, like something like that, you know, like he's really up there for me. Uh, otherwise, it would be someone else that also not it's not around. It would be Freddie Mercury. So those are fantastic, you know, musical icons. And I do know that you didn't always, you weren't always involved with metal, especially growing up. So how would you say that these other influences come into the music that you play now? Um, well, I had to think about that a little bit before uh, I had a question in a different interview. But I, you know, when I started, I had no clue. I, I just was thrown into it and I, I loved it, but I did had no background uh, really. Like I didn't know what was appropriate. I didn't know what was not appropriate. So um, I just started making, you no, know, that was in the time of, I started Seventh Wonder. I just did so many things differently. I, did, uh, I didn't do the classic power metal singing or rock metal singing. I, I was just singing pop basically over this um, music and throwing in a lot, lots of runs and ad libs and and stuff that we'd, you'd see in pop. But um, now, I mean, it's, that became my style, right? That became a, a different style. And I think it's opened up. I, I see some other singers doing that now more so. Um, and I don't know if, if that helped open up a, you know, a, a new style or, or something like that, but it definitely wasn't really around when I started. So I, I, think, I think maybe I contributed with something good, you know, uh, throw, making two worlds mesh a little bit. Absolutely. And I mean, within metal and even rock, you've kind of become an icon of your own, you know, between being the face of these two fantastic bands. Like, do you ever feel like you're, you know, a rock star? Never, never. I get, I probably get more nervous than you uh, or, or anyone, you know, um, interviewing me like, like why these people want to talk to me, you know? So uh, it, it's interesting. I never get used to it. I think that's just how it, you know, maybe you were raised or you were, you know, just born a certain way, but it's hard. I, I don't, every time this time comes around when I have to do interviews, I'm like, you know, like I'm surprised if people know who I am, so. Got to see that interview. Um, I watched it just a while ago. It was a really fun interview and it really, dove deep into a lot of your personal history with music too. Yeah. Um, are you ever interested in revisiting um, kind of a different era of music that has influenced you or joining a project that's outside of metal? Oh yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm starting working on my, my own stuff now and I'm not sure what that's gonna be yet, but, but um, definitely I have so much more than metal that I wanna do in my, you know, my musicality extends in so, into so many different genres. And um, I started with musicals and, you know, like I love that stuff and, and uh, just be able to sing, you know, and fully vocally express yourself uh, over in, you know, strings or a guitar or, or um, a piano or something like that, where you can just let the vocals shine. It's kind of what I've, what I really want to do in the future, at least if it's not the first album, then maybe the second album is going to be mostly acoustic stuff. And, uh, so I hope, you know, it looks, I'm excited for the future because uh, I have a lot of fun things happen coming up. So you're saying that we should be on the lookout for an upcoming solo album? Yeah, at least, you know, who knows how long it's going to take, but uh, uh, definitely I mean, I'm working on it already. So. Yeah, um, 
And as you said, you are just constantly busy with different things. So of course, that's something else to keep you busy. Um, aside from being essentially a full-time musician, um, what do you do to kind of unwind? Um, hmm. Well, during COVID, we, we were in a really fortunate spot that I can go outside and chop wood for hours, which is uh, was really amazing for for just you know being outside and connecting with nature and centering yourself and and not really think about anything so i think that you know working out has been that for me for my whole life i don't really think about anything um and it gives you a good feeling you know but um then you know being outside has been the new thing being outside and being physical i mean you must have to, how energetic you are at your shows. I mean, that's a whole workout in itself. Um, and speaking of those shows, um, I was fortunate enough to see you with Seventh Wonder at Prague Power in, wow, what was that now, 2019? Whew, feels like a whole lifetime ago. Um, but when it comes to like festivals and traveling, is there any festival that you have not played or any place that you have not yet traveled to that you would want to? Um. Yeah, well, I've always thought I, I wanted to go to the Mald Maldives. Um, that would be cool. Not with music, though. So I don't think there's anyone listening to me to metal <laughs> over there. But um, or maybe maybe there is. But um, but before they get submerged in water, I would like to visit that place for a couple of days. That'd be nice. Um, other than that, we just we went to Africa last year. It was amazing. Um, and um, climb Kil Mount Kilimanjaro together with the family, which was also amazing. Um, but in terms of festivals that I haven't done, I mean, um, Coachella would be cool. Um, you know, if that had like, a, I don't know how many metal bands play there, but but that's a cool festival. And um, another festival, I have to think about this. Um, <laughs> There's a festival, like a seven day one in Slovenia, I think. Um, which is, you know, very just beautiful in the mountains there. I can't remember. It's like seven days of metal. I can't remember, but it looks beautiful every time I see photos from there. I mean, who wouldn't want to go? That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, and again, another question about, you know, dreams and aspirations when touring. Is there any band that you've not yet toured with that you would like to tour with? Um, I'd like to tour with Dream Theater. I think that'd be cool, be a good fit. And um, just because also, you know, it's like one of the first progressive metal bands that I listened to that inspired me. Uh, and uh, we got to tour with uh, Sonata Arctica a couple of years back. And that was also cool because it's also one of my first bands that I listened to that was like, wow, this is cool. And uh, so I had like a, just an eclectic angle coming into metal, but uh, you know, those are bands, you know, those, um, household names in the, in the metal genre that I looked up to or still do. And, you know, that'd be cool to tour with those guys. Yeah, absolutely. I could only imagine. Thank you for tuning in to Sonic Perspectives. To catch more interviews like this one, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be on the lookout for Camelot's new album, The Awakening, coming out on March 17th. All right. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great interview. Oh, thanks. Well, you have a fantastic rest of your day and uh, hopefully you can catch it, like take a break soon. Go outside. I will. I will. They're, they're installing a new uh, garage door opener, so I got to go check on it before the next oh. interview. <laughs> All right. Busy, busy. Well, you take That's care. Good. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye.